Good morning. My name is Charles Morgan. <clears throat> I want to thank you for uh, being with us and listening to us, and and uh, we just so much appreciate that. Sometimes we get some comments. Well, I appreciate those too. Uh, I speak to people that uh, tell me they've listened to us on the radio or or uh, on the internet, uh, YouTube, Facebook. We got uh, podcasts. You can just search for Word is Alive and find those things. But uh, uh, that that helps me out. Know that uh, we're reaching some people. This morning I'm going to be in the book of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. This is uh, the second of a uh, couple of passages that are in the Bible. Uh, we call them books. They were letters that were written to the church at Corinth. I, I had a friend that was, uh, we were talking and we were wondering why anyone would name their church Corinth. And if your church is named Corinth, I mean, don't go change the name, but it was not a good place and they were not doing good things. And Paul had to get on to them. In the first uh, book, he, he talks to them and he tells them that they are his epistle, uh, his letter uh, to the world. It's not written by uh, hands with on uh, paper, but they were uh, his students, uh, his converts, uh, those that had converted to Jesus Christ, and he had taught them, and so they were reaching out uh, to the world, and they were his epistle, he said, to the world so that uh, the world would know more about Christ. Uh, here he's talking about things done in your body, and, and you know, uh, the fact that it's not just getting saved, and you go, okay, I'm saved, and and it doesn't matter what I do, you know. And I, I've heard people say things. I've been in, in churches all my life, and and uh, heard people say, "Well, you know, I'm saved, and I don't have to prove it. And, you know, I can just do anything I want." You know, well, that's not the case. And when I, I actually started studying my Bible, I found out that it's absolutely not the case. Uh, we're we're supposed to present ourselves to other people. Now, uh, do we have to answer to them? No, we don't. But we're going to have to answer to God for how we reacted, how we acted, how we did things, what we did, what we didn't do. Uh, we're going to have to answer to God for those things. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, starting in verse 5, and I wish I could get everything in here, but now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who, hath, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing, rather to be present, absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Therefore, wherefore, we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Verse 11, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God. And I trust also are made manifest in your conscience. Okay, so he's speaking to these guys and he's letting them know about the body versus the spirit. And he, he talks about that uh, he hath wrought us in the selfsame thing as God. He's, he's made us. He's brought us here. And we need to understand that God made us. He made us for his service. Once we accept Christ, we are part of his family and we are to serve God. We are to do those things which he had told us. We are no longer who we were. The Bible talks about this being a new creature, a uh, new creation. We are changed. Uh, we are to be different. We are not to act the same. We are not to be the same people. Uh, I see this too many times. You know, people just, they're acting carnal. They're acting carnal and it's says we'll be known by our fruits. You know, I can't, I can't judge somebody's salvation. Can't do that. But I can look at them and say, hey, their, their fruit's not very good. My fruit's not been very good at times. So, uh, but here's the thing, you know, do you keep bearing that fruit or do you prune that off and you keep on going in the way you're supposed to? You repent. We don't talk a lot about that in our world today because we don't like that. It's called repentance. It means taking it to God and say, I messed up. I messed up against you, and I want to repent about that. I want to not do that anymore. It's not just taking our, our slate to him and go, hey, clean this up so I can keep on doing what I'm doing because I want to be the way I am. That's, that's not the correct attitude, but unfortunately in too many of our churches it is. I see people that as long as they've got their name on a church roll, and uh, the more I, I go through my life and my ministry, the more I'm disgusted by church rolls and what we've made them. Uh, you go in, and uh, not all churches have them, but you go in and you, you get your name there. You can vote. You can do all these things. And you think, oh, well, I'm secure because that's it. Uh, we're not teaching people right, and we're not telling them, hey, that's not the important thing. 
The important thing is having your name on the Lamb's Book of Life. As long as he knows your name, that's the important thing. But we're supposed to do what he would have us to do. So therefore, we are always confident. Knowing that while we're at home in the body, we're absent from the Lord. We're not with him right now. Now, these apostles, they walked with him. And John talks about this. They were with him. When he left, they were looking forward to being with him again as they were before. But while we're here in these bodies, we're not with him. We're going to be. We're looking forward to that day, but we're to live as if we are. We're to live as if we are with Christ in every single way and every single day. Why Why do we look at this and go, we just got a license? You know, it's almost like, you know, well, nobody's watching me, so I can do whatever I want. That's not the correct thing either. We live in a world where cameras are everywhere and people can't get by with anything because they are being watched. But what about uh, when you aren't and you do the wrong thing because nobody paid attention to you and you thought, well, I got by with it because nobody saw me do it. You still did wrong. That's the case here. We act like, well, we're not with God. We're not with the Jesus. So we can just do whatever we want because it's it's down the road that we're going to pay for that or we're going to answer for that. No. No, we need to be concerned about it right now because, as Paul said in 1 Corinthians, we are the epistle to the world. They are looking at us. This world is looking at us right now. Are there some bad players within the Christian community? Absolutely. There are bad players in everything. Are there some false prophets within the Christian community? Absolutely. There always has been, always will be. Are those some people that just mess up? Yep, they are. You know, and we need to address that. You know, we've got all kinds of things going on, and and we look at this, and and uh, sometimes we just say, oh well, you know, they're this and that. Although maybe we have done the same thing, and been guilty of the same thing, but we want to get down on them. Uh, but the world is looking at our Christian community. It's looking at how we react to things when we let people slide when they do things wrong because they're so far up the ladder. The world sees that. The world sees that and said. You don't really mean what you say. You don't really care. You're like, oh, well, we'll, get, we'll give them a pass, but, you know, uh, the person that we don't like that came into church and they did something, uh, we're going we're gonna to shun them. We're going to discard them. It happens every day. It happens all the time. And uh, if you don't know that, it does. And uh, if you're listening to this and you're not a child of God, let me tell you, we are imperfect beings in these imperfect bodies serving a perfect Lord. We do mess up. We are going to answer for those things. He says, we walk by faith, not by sight. We're not seeing him, but we have faith in him. He may be not physically here with us. He will be one day, and we have faith that that's going to happen. Folks, I truly believe he's going to come back for his own before he comes back to this earth. And uh, I'm looking forward to that day. Um, I, I see everything that's happening in our world, and I see that things are falling into place. If you pay attention to the Middle East, uh, you can see that everything is falling into place, just like the Bible says it is going to do. And I want to talk about that. I, as people say, well, I don't want to talk about that. I do want to talk about it. I see some alliances being made that people thought never would happen. Uh, Turkey and China and all these people, you know, that, that are getting together that never would have before that uh, it's in the Bible and says they will. And so we see these things happening and we need to look at it and know that, hey, time is approaching. Do I know what time that's going to be? Do I know when it's going to be? No, I absolutely do not. But I do know this. It's closer today than it was yesterday. And it keeps getting closer. And we need to be prepared in our hearts. You know, it may be another hundred years. It may be another few minutes. I don't know exactly when it's going to be but i do see these things falling into place and i can see the signs it's just like if you're going to a destination and as you get there you'll see the signs for your destination you will have a mile uh maybe 10 miles and the next one's five miles and you know you're getting closer to your destination i can see the signs all around us and i know we're getting closer to the destination what is that destination of christ coming back christ establishing himself on this earth Christ being the government, Christ being in charge again. He is God and he has told us this is what he's going to do. But there's going to be some things happening. And we know we walk by faith. And folks, that's, that's what we have right now. We have that faith, that hope that buoys us, that brings us up and it should. And I've talked about this before, but we should not be down. We should not be looking around. Are, are we 
uh, cognizant of things that's going around? Absolutely. Man, I can look around. I can see what's going on. I know that, hey, I pay the same pro amount of gas for you, uh, for me that you do. I mean, it costs me the same. Everything's going up. Uh, I'm dealing with those same things. I'm not blind to those things. So I'm not telling you everything is great in those regards. But I'm telling you that we shouldn't be down like the rest of the world is. We should be up because we've got a Savior. We've got something that they don't have, and we should let them know that. So how, how can you be this way through all this? Because I have a Savior. I know I've got a great hope. I know that this is not all there is. I know that if I lose everything here, I still have a home in heaven. If I lose everything here, I still have a Lord. I still have a Savior who cares about me, and He's still going to carry me through. He's going to make sure that I get through this. He's going to give me what I need and he's going to allow me to do what he is going to allow me to do. And I should always be about the business of telling people about Jesus Christ. If we're down, if we're looking at it and, 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 and degrading everything that we talk about and how bad it is and how this is awful and, and it's all falling apart and nothing's ever going to be right again, you think they're going to look at us and go, hey, I want what they've got? Absolutely not. No. We should be smiling and say, yeah, storm's here, looks pretty bad, but I've got a Savior that's going to carry me through. And that's tough to do, but it takes getting on your knees. It takes having a relationship with Christ, getting in your Bible, knowing these things that are coming up. He said, we're confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. I know that when I die, my spirit is going to be with the Lord. And then one day he's going to resurrect my body and make it right and my spirit's going to be with it again and we're going to be changed forever i'm looking forward to that day i don't know if that day's going to come soon as i said i don't know if i'm going to die a physical death here before that happens i truly believe that we're all going to experience death even when that change happens that old body has to die that's that's the condemnation of it it has to die. So we, even during that change, people say, well, I, I'd rather be changed than to die. Well, I still think that during that change, there's going to be a death. The Bible says it's pointing unto men once to die. Now, some have told me, and I've even had preachers tell me, well, that that's the general rule. Now, I, I think that's the rule. Now, if you disagree with me on that, that's that's fine. I'm okay with that. As long as you have Jesus Christ as your Savior, we can disagree on a few things. And I'll be okay with it. Most time people are not okay with me, but I'm okay with them. And we should be. We want to get them saved and then follow after the Lord and study the Bible. Be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I preach a lot of ser uh, sermons for funerals and things like that and talk about those. Those that have died in Christ are now with him. In verse 9 he says, Wherefore we labor, that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. He said, we get out there and we work for the Lord because we want to be accepted of him. We want to do the right thing. We want him to be pleased with us. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. That's what we want to hear. We want to hear, hear as well as there. See, Paul's telling him, he said, it's not enough for you to say, oh, well, we'll take care of it then. And right now, we'll just live the way we want to. That's what these guys were doing. They were just living the way they wanted to and saying, well, well, it's, it's okay. I've got my fire insurance. I've got it taken care of. I'll, you know, I'll be with the Lord and everything's going to be okay and, and it won't matter. You know, I don't have to tell people about Jesus. I don't have to study my Bible. I don't have to uh, be a servant to him. I can just sit back. I can do everything I was doing before, make all the money I can, cheat all the people I can. It doesn't really matter, but it does. He's saying we labor for the Lord to be accepted to him right here as well as when we're going to be with him. This is the thing that we want. We should always be working for the Lord. Now, I'm going to tell you that too many people get caught up into it, and, and I'm not saying uh, works is going to save you. We work for the Lord because we are saved. We don't work for him to get saved. But we work for him. Why? Because he's given us a gift that is beyond belief beyond anything that we could physically and mentally handle as human beings. But yet it's true. And that's what we have to do, believe in it. 
It's supernatural. It's beyond the natural. He gave us a free gift of salvation. What is that? Eternal life. How long is eternity? Eternal. No end. It's forever. Jesus is an eternal God. He was in our beginning, but he was before that. He had to be. He didn't just all of a sudden pop into existence and say, Hey, I, I think I'll make the earth. He's an eternal being. He said, whether absent from the body or present, we labor. We want to labor to be accepted of him. You know, my dad would always tell me, you know, if I was doing something, hey, you behave right. You do right. You know, especially when I got to be a teenager and I'd go uptown, you know, you act right. You know, we've worked hard for this name. You you act right, you know. And, and I wasn't always pleasing him, I'll just tell you that. But... I should have been. And when I did do right, it was pleasing to him. He would hear back, you know, um, it, you know, he's a good worker, or he, he did a good deed, or he, he did this, you know, and my dad was pleased with that. Our Heavenly Father is pleased with that when we work, when we do the right things. Maybe we work, and maybe you've worked, and you say, well, I'm not seeing any results. That's not the point. The results are his. It's the fact that we're doing it for him. We do it for him. He said, we must all appear before Christ, the judgment seat of Christ. Folks, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. You know, there's going to be a redemption of the body. And then we're going to appear before Christ. Romans 8 and 23 says it like this. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of the body. The body is going to be changed. It is going to be made right. Right now it's a sinful body. The Bible talks it's going to be made incorruptible, sinless, and immortal, without death. It's going to be changed. We are going to have that. We are going to be changed. But in the meantime, we're here. We got to work. We got to do what we uh, can for the Lord. Philippians tells us this. For our conversation is in heaven. That means what we do here is reflected in heaven. What we do here matters. What we do here is consequential. What we do here has results. So our conversation in heaven from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. So we see this. It's going to be changed. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. I made reference to the verse while ago. It's appointed unto men once to die. And then the judgment. That's what it said over in Hebrews. It talks about this. And then the judgment. Now, for years I was taught that, well, that judgment was for only for the lost. Well, that's not the truth. That judgment is for us as well. <coughs> the judgment seat of Christ for those that are saved. The great white throne for those that are not. That everyone may receive the things done in his body. Now listen to that. While we're absent from the Lord in our body. That's what the judgment seat of Christ is about. It's not about our salvation. It's not about whether we're going into heaven or hell. It's about what we've done in our body. He said, may receive the things done in his body. What does that mean? There are consequences to what we do in our bodies. Child of God, I'm telling you right now, we need to be about his business. We need to be about watching what we do with our bodies, how we do it. Not only outside the church, but inside the church. The churches of today are being destroyed from within. You say, well, you've talked about all the things coming against them. I, I, I'm telling you, Satan is attacking the church, but it's being destroyed from within. Because he knows that he can't do it from without. 
If the church inside is strong, if the church inside is doing what it's supposed to, if the church inside is working for the Lord, if the church inside, all the members have him in their minds and doing what he supposed to, uh, has told us we're supposed to do, then it will not be destroyed. They decay from within. I see this all the time, and you have too. You drive by, and you see a building, and you know it used to be a church. I know of a building right now that's not too far from me. It used to be a church. It's a liquor store now. I see them that they've been made into homes or whatever else, but they used to be church buildings. And what happened to them? They decayed from within. The people within couldn't get along or they didn't want to do what Christ had told them to. They wanted to be their old person. They didn't want to be that new person. Uh, they didn't have an outreach within the community. And everybody looked at them and said, I don't want to be a part of them. And they decayed from within. I went to pastor a church one time, went door knocking. And as I was going around, people would tell me, you seem like a nice person. I wish you the best, but that's the meanest people I've ever met in my life. I wouldn't go there. And come to find out, they were telling the truth. They were some of the meanest people I'd ever met in my life. They were decaying within, dwindling down. Few people would come in and realize what was going on, and then they would leave. Pastors came and went. Some had only been there two weeks because of how mean those people were. I'm telling you, they decay from within because they no longer worship the Lord and what they're doing in their body is wrong. What we, The things done in our body, and listen to this, according that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. So there's going to be some pats on the back, okay? There's going to be some that say, well done, thou good and faithful servant, you did good. We're all going to have the good and the bad. Some of us a lot more good than others, some a lot more bad than others. And I'm telling you what, I'm not especially looking forward to this because I understand how my scale is. And each one of us knows that. Today what I'm challenging us to all to do is get down on our hands and knees and say, Lord, forgive us, help us to start right now to get on the good side. To be everything that we do with our bodies, the good side, to those within the church without the church, that we may be that epistle to the world, <coughs> not written with hands, but written on our hearts, that the world can see us and say, there is something different about them. I want what they have. I want Jesus. And then we need to let them know that's exactly what we have. That we have Jesus. And we know that we're going to stand before him. I think that if we all truly believe this, and, I, and I'm telling you right now, I think most people who call them children of, themselves children of God don't truly believe the Bible. They say they do, but yet when it comes down to this, they don't make a change. So they don't truly believe the Bible. They want to discard the parts they want to and accept the ones that they don't. And this has become more and more prevalent as our, the, our uh, time here on this earth goes, especially in our nation. We're looking at things and saying, well, I, I know what it says, but I don't really believe that. That's archaic. And we, we even try to find different ones that write and say, well, that's not true. And, and uh, that's, that's different than what we thought. And, and we'll say, oh, yeah, see, that's what I've always thought. We're looking for people. we got itching ears, looking for people that will tell us what we want to hear, that will tell us. Well, you're doing okay. Don't worry about it. You don't have to adhere to the Bible. You don't have to adhere to Christ. And don't worry about this old judgment thing. You know, it's been overrated. Well, I'm telling you right now, it's appointed unto men once to die and then the judgment. You will answer for everything you've done in your body. Just like I will. We better wake up and smell the coffee, America. Better wake up and know that Jesus Christ is still on the throne. Now, what you thought you did in secret, it's not a secret to him. Maybe nobody else knows about it. He does. And you'll answer for it. You, oh, well, it won't be a big deal. Sounds like to me it will be. He said, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. Verse 11. The terror of the Lord. Hey, he is a great mighty God. It says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the Lord. I'd really rather be on his side. I'd rather stand there and him go, yeah. 
This good outweighs the bad. You've got a crown here. We'll take this one away. But look, even all the crowns we get, we're going to lay at his feet. We're not working for that. We're working for him. I'd rather him say that he's pleased with me than to receive any old crown. I want him to be pleased with me here. Have I done everything absolutely right? Nope. Messed up? Yep. Everybody has. David, man after God's own heart, messed up really bad. Consequences for that. Far-reaching consequences for him. But yet he took it to the Lord and he said, I've sinned against you. We can do that right now. We can take it to him. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. That's our job. We're to persuade men. We're to tell them about the Lord. We're to tell them about that. Because we'd way rather them stand at this judgment than that great white throne when there is no hope for them anymore. There's no calling out. They're not going to be able to say, hey, uh, let me make amends right now. The Bible tells us in Philippians, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I'd rather do it here and I'd rather persuade men here than to see them trying to do it at the great white throne and knowing it's too late. When your eyes close in death, your decision has been made. Make your decision today. You say, well, I've never made a decision for Christ. What does that mean? The Bible says if you'll confess the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You'll be saved from hell. You'll give it all over to him. You're making him Lord of your life. And you're saying, Lord, I'm going to do it your way now. You know, when I lived in my folks' house, I, I adhere to their rules. I didn't like them, but I had to because I lived in their house. When I got out of their house, I decided I didn't have to do that. Then I started realizing why they had those rules. I started realizing why my dad would go around turning off all the lights. Because all of a sudden, I'm paying an electric bill. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm paying an electric bill. And I realized why he didn't want ever lighting the house on. I realized that his rules were some pretty good rules. There were some that I didn't adhere to, but there were a lot of them I did. I realized, hey, that's the reason he's doing this. That's the reason he was the way he was. It was because of this. The Lord's got these rules, but it all is for our good. If we'll do the things that he has told us to do, it will be good for us. Bible 8 and 28 of Romans tells us all things work together for good to them that love the Lord, to them that are called according to his purpose. He's going to work together for our good. He's got us. So if you get saved, follow him. If you are saved and you're not following him, follow after him. Do what he has told us to. Because I'm going to tell you what, if you can't just do it because you love the Lord, do it because you know you're going to stand at judgment one day. Accept the free gift of salvation. I'm talking about truly accept it, turning your life over to him. And I'm going to tell you, if you truly turn your life over to him, your want to is going to change. Your desires are going to change. The things that you thought were important are no longer going to be important. The things that are, are beyond you, you're going to say those are important. You're going to see that you want people to get saved, even people you don't like. And that's a tough one. People that don't like you. You still don't want them to go to hell. You may want them to stay away from you, by the way. But you don't want them to go to hell. We stand before him. He made us. He's given us the earnestness of spirit. We're confident that while we're with this body, we're absent from the Lord. But when we're absent from this body, we're going to be present with the Lord. We know those things. We're going to work whether absent or present. It doesn't matter. We're not saying, hey, I'm going to wait till I get to be with the Lord. Then I'm going to start working. No, we say, I'm going to work for him right now. And we are going to stand before him at a judgment. The judgment seat of Christ. By the way, this is also in Romans 14.10 if you want to look at that. And the great white throne is Revelation 22 and 12. Hebrews 9 and 27 tells us we're going to be judged. It's appointed on men once to die and then to judgment. You can look all those scriptures up. I don't have time to get into all of them. I wish I did. But I'm telling you right now, Jesus loves you. He died on the cross for you. He wants you to have eternal life. He wants you to stand at this judgment instead of the great white throne. He wants you to stand before him and say, I love you. 
your name's written down here. I want you to go to heaven. Step right in. I died for you. You accepted that free gift. Won't you this morning accept that free gift of salvation and then live accordingly after that so that all the world can look at us and go, there they are. I want that. Tell me how to get that. Help, tell me how to have it. My name is Charles Morgan. I'm with Word is Live Ministries. I want to thank you for allowing me to be with you today.